Hey guys, today in this video, I'm going to show you how you can buy yourself crypto using Replit with our Alpaca API. Okay, so as always, you need your Alpaca API keys. And in this case, we're going to use Replit, so you need a Replit account. Um, here's the article, and I'm going to write in the description the link to it, so you can just follow along and click on any links that it has as always. So you can, for example, click here, Replit, and it opens the web page. And well, I'm already logged in into my account. So once you create it, you can fork it and we can start coding. Well, it's actually already coded. So we're just going to fix it um, to however we want to use it. And yeah. Okay. So we have it here. We're going to import our OS environment and or variables, right? So we have here the Bitcoin. We're going to use actually Bitcoin and Ethereum for this case. You can use whatever coins that, that you want. Um, and we're naming in BTC ETH for the variables, right? And then we're going to name our API keys. We're actually going to go here in secrets and I'm going to add my key. So I'm going to go to my account and I'm going to just create new keys. Yep. And we can just copy them. And so it's saying key here and it's called API underscore key and the value is then we're going to add a new secret and let me copy this and the key is API secret. And we're going to add it. So we're good. We have both of them. Let's see. Okay. For base URL, here's the link for paper API. It's right here. But if you're using your actual live trading account, you can just remove the paper API and that's it. So we named our variables and we have it here. Okay. First, I want just to remove that part. So I just click here. They're still saved. And now we have our account. We're going to get our account info and we want our cash, right? We call it float because we, we want to make it a number. And then, okay, we're calling this snapshot. So basically we're saying we want all the info that Bitcoin has done, right? We don't want the historical data. We just want it as what is right now. Like we've decided that we're just going to buy it at the price that it's right now, right? So we want the Bitcoin. We're using this exchange Coinbase, same for Ethereum. We do want the latest price, but we're saying, okay, we're going to buy at the latest price and we want the quote. Same for Ethereum. And so here I'm saying cash to spend between divided by two because I'm going to do a limit and market. But right now I'm just going to, I'm actually just going to remove this and I'm going to show you why. Because I have here two, give me one second. Okay. So yeah, so I'm divided by, by two. The I'm going to do half Bitcoin, half Ethereum. That's it. And then here we just want to calculate the order size. So we're saying, okay, our cash to spend is this amount and we want the latest price. And for the precision factor, we want three decimal places. And we're saying, okay, how many units do we want to buy? Right? So we have the cash to spend and then we're going to multiply it by the precision factor divided by the latest price. And the reason why I'm multiplying the cash to spend divided by the precision factor divided by the latest price is because we want to round it to the nearest whole number using the floor function and then divided by a thousand again. That's the only reason. So we move back to our unit. Then yeah, it's right here. Units divided by the precision factor. That's it. Okay. So we're saying our Bitcoin units, how many we're going to have, right? So we're going to calculate the order size, the cash to spend that it's available for Bitcoin and the latest price. Same for Ethereum. Now we're saying, okay, so we're going to do limit and then we're going to do market. But first we're going to do limit. So basically here is we're submitting our order and we're calling all the variables that we've named before, right? So we're saying, okay, our symbol is Bitcoin and it's up here. And then we're saying, okay, our Bitcoin units is right here. We already said how much we want. So it's already saying quantity. It's already calculating it for us. And then we want the, the order type and we want the limit price to be the latest price, right? And that's it. And same for Ethereum. And yeah, it's going to submit the order, but we're just saying just print and let me know, you know, how many Bitcoin units I bought at and at which price. And we're just going to run it. Um, it's going to take a little bit because it's thinking of, of everything that we call since the environment and everything. Okay. So it ran and it said, okay, we bought 1.255 Bitcoin and 39. That's the price. And then 17 Ethereum at uh, 2,900. Okay. So this is a limit order. So now what I'm going to do is, you know, I actually have to reset my paper account because I'm going to show you the market limit and I want to use the whole amount I have available. So I reset 
my paper account because I want the whole 100,000 in order to buy limit. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to paste the other part that I had deleted before. Okay, and I'm going to paste it. And there we go. So we're saying, okay, submit order, the symbol that we have and the cash to spend. That's it. We don't need any limit or any last price or anything because we're just doing market, right? We're going to run it. Oh, FYI, it didn't run and I'm going to tell you why. So I didn't change the keys because when I regenerated my buying power, like my account, it created new keys. So I have to get them and I'm going to change them. Okay, I just changed them and let's run it and see what happens now. Okay, so I run it and it said, okay, placed a market order to buy 50,000 worth of Bitcoin. And it did buy them, but I wanted to print here how many did I buy and at what price. So I'm going to go ahead and add that here. Okay, so I went ahead and added a little bit of more code worth of Bitcoin at the latest price and a total of BTC units, right? So I'm going to run it. You can do the same thing for Ethereum. I'm going to do that and I'm going to run it and see what I get. Okay, so I added the same code for the Ethereum part. So it's going to print the same for both and the same info for both. I'm going to go ahead and run it. Okay, so it's saying 50,000 worth of Bitcoin and Ethereum for each. And then Bitcoin at 39,700, total of 1.259. And same amount for Ethereum, obviously more Ethereum because it's cheaper. And that's it. There you go. So you can do for any coin that you want as many coins and the code is right there. You can just fork it and change it around to your needs. So comment below and like the video. Let me know what else you want to watch. Bye.